So this next video is just simple, very simple curve editor use and kind of just talking about what the curve editor is. Um, so if you're new to animation, you probably don't know, but when we're animating, typically we want to use as few keyframes as possible. When you create keyframes, you're recording parameters. When you record those parameters, what you do is you're creating a curve. Uh, and this curve, we typically can see in some sort of a graph editor. That's typically what they call it, I believe, in Maya. Uh, in 3ds Max, it's called the curve editor. So let's say I have an animation in my scene, which I have here. Again, just simple movement forward. Uh, this is just me setting two keyframes along my timeline. And I just simply have position A, position B right character moves forward let's say I want to change the speed of this animation I don't want to create more poses I don't want to create more keyframes because that will give me uh, irregular movement uh, in my animation it can cause uh, I like to call them speed bumps along my curve my curve I want to be nice and smooth the smoother my curve the smoother my movement right and typically smoother movement means more appealing movement or more appealing to the human eye so in order for to actually open up the curve editor here I have my point helper selected I'm gonna simply right click anywhere inside my open viewport it doesn't matter where as long as it's not over top of the object and we're gonna go down to curve editor and looking for curve editor so it's gonna open up this window here I'm just gonna simply frame my animation up so I can actually watch it. Uh, what you're seeing here is essentially a list of different parameters off to the left side of this window. These parameters are corresponding to different things that have been animated, such as our position movement, right? Um, now, off to the right here, you have kind of like a graph, and you're going to see things uh, that somewhat resemble kind of like parabolas, or they kind of look like parabolas from like high school classes and stuff like that, but essentially they're just graphs, and these graphs and these lines represent the movement uh, or, or different parameters that have been animated. So in order for you to navigate inside this curve editor here, uh, you're going to simply just click and hold down on your middle mouse button. That allows you to actually pan around this viewport here. Now, the navigation also is a, it's a little fun. Funky, um, but if you want to scale your timeline here or scale your graph, I'm going to simply click down and hold on Control and Alt. I'm then going to click and hold on my middle mouse button, and that's going to allow me to actually scale this graph either vertically or horizontally. Now, what you see here is we have a couple different lines shown in this graph. That's because we have a couple different parameters selected. Typically, I'm going to be working with one parameter at a time. Now, I have my Y position parameter selected because that's what I've animated inside my scene. So what you can see here again is our curve. By default, 3ds Max is going to add a little bit of a slow in and slow out, right? Basically, in other words, acceleration and deacceleration onto this character's movement. Again, if I want to go in here and make changes to my movement, such as speed changes, we can do so by simply grabbing these small little dots, and what these little dots on the graph are corresponding to are our keyframes, right? So if I grab a keyframe with my graph, I'm actually also selecting it along my timeline. Now we've got these large purple handles kind of stemming out from that keyframe. If I take that handle, I can actually pull this, and you can see it's actually going to alter the shape of our curve. Now it's altering the shape of the curve, which is also going to alter the pace or the movement of our character, right? So you can see I now have this slightly different time, right? It's a slower movement at the beginning, and then we kind of quicken as we get closer to the end, sorry, the end of the animation. Uh, I can make all sorts of different changes here, right? Let's see what happens when I make this type of a slope, right? You can see we have a very, very quick slope down, and then we really kind of almost like flatten out here as we go into our final pose. Again, you can see very clear change in my animation. Again, I'm not making new poses. I'm not making more keyframes. I'm simply just altering my curves. So ultimately, when you are animating, whether it be characters or any sort of inanimate objects, you want to use as few keyframes as possible. You want to try and keep your curves nice and smooth for solid, uh, really appealing movement for the human eye.